Hello, everyone. Good afternoon to this stage. This is stage two. We are talking about asynchronous API this afternoon with some brilliant speakers. Our first speaker this afternoon is Ovid. And so Ahmed will be talking about, um, about event-driven design um, and working with serverless systems. And Ahmed is a solutions architect at Group Solagere. And so welcome to the stage. Hello. Ahmed, please feel free. We can hear you. Please feel free to share your slides when you are ready. Yeah. Everything yes. is okay. Okay, we can go. I can you start? Please feel free to start when you're ready. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Omid. I'm a technical lead for the stick and software architect. Uh, actually, I'm working in uh, Group Solution in France. And uh, today, we all want to go have a look at event driven design and serverless. I call them the future life of APIs. Uh, I love it. So you can join me in LinkedIn to your GitHub as you want. My GitHub name is a bit uh, like a hybrid, and but you can join me everywhere you want. And uh, let's have a look in event driven architecture. We call it EDA. Don't be confused if you see the, uh, this word in my slide. It's event driven architecture. Uh, let's have a look in some characteristics of event-driven architecture. Uh, in event-driven design, we decouple everything. The, the whole system is uh, fully decoupled, and any part of system is independent and decoupled. Uh, when I call it fully decoupled, uh, there can be some dependencies, but we keep it as must as possible uh, decoupled. Uh, any part of system must be resilient. Any part of system that we all will this system will uh, bring you business value. So any part of system can handle the failures, the availability, and all this stuff. So any part of system is uh, need to guarantee the resiliency of its system. Uh, reduce complexity. They bring us reduced complexity. Someone say uh, event-driven architecture bring us some complexity. I don't, I don't call them complexities. They are the challenge, the digital platform challenge, the IT challenges that we have to accept one day. So I call it uh, reduced complexity, but someone call it improved complexity. I call it re reduced complexity in a business perspective manner. Uh, they are adaptable solution. You don't need to rethink about your design, the full design, to just cover um, a small use case. So we prefer to keep them stateless. We don't we don't prefer to share the estate between the uh, different parts. So uh, eventually, the event remote sector has three parts. Theoretical parts, event producer, event router, and event consumers. You can have one, two, three, and n consumers. So that's your responsibility to guarantee the your SLA service level agreement to all these consumers. So what's happened here? Event producer send you a brute event, or you can call it message, a brute message that the router will process it and evaluate it and add some business value states to the event. And at this step, we call it evaluated event or a real entity. So the consumers are waiting for that and that's your responsibility to send that event, that evaluated event to all these consumers. Uh, I think it's not bad to have a look at these three, three components of a whole architecture. The event producer doesn't care about the process. Your process, that's your process. That's the router responsibility. Event producer sends you, just respect your API contract, your um, event contract, 
uh, event contract is uh, something like a REST API contract. You use Swagger, you use uh, Open API. That's kind of that's well defined, well versioned, and uh, documented. So they tell you that, and sometimes they need callbacks, or most of the time, no. But in some scenarios, they need callbacks. I will explain as a simple scenario just uh, to make you informed about the possibilities. And event producer is totally decoupled from the rest of the system. As I said, they don't care about the process. For the callback one, callback uh, the third item, uh, let's have a look at an example. The general personal information regulation rights. You have the penalty if you're not able to respect that. So that's not your responsibility to validate that. But a team that manage that will send you an event. So remove all the information about omit. So you got that. You remove all this information. But finally, you validate your process. You have a success, but everything fails. We're not sure. But that, that team, the corresponding team, will mm, handle that with guarantee the removal part. That uh, he will validate that your process was well, well, well affected on the data. So, and this part, they need a callback, but it's not a callback. It's not a, a, syn a synchronous callback. It's a, a synchronous acknowledgement. So you give them an, an act after your process. They will call them later. Uh, call about that later. Even consumers. Before talking about the own router or processor, uh, let's have a look at the consumer part. So the consumers are the subscriber of your system. Uh, they're subscribed to receive the event, need event within a specific uh, state. Without that estate, they're, if they don't care about your estate, uh, your process, they're not your consumers. Already, if they are looking for the brute event, they're consumers of event producer, but not you. Uh, they need a consumption contract. Again, you must to version that contract, document and well-define that contract. And also, they're totally decoupled. And finally, you, the event router, event producer, in any diagram, in uh, any article, you can find a new name. I call them the router because they are processing and routing the events. Uh, the router process events, add some value to that event, evaluate the root event to reach an state. As I said, a state equal to business value. May need dependencies. You may need dependencies to evaluate your, to process your root event. For example, an order system, get the order request, and in the order root event, you have the user information maybe the, the quantity and some some kind of stuff attached to the product reference but how you can send the email to the user that we got your order so you need the product name so you're you you have a couple dependencies hard couple dependency to the product system so um, let's have an example, an e-commerce example, a typical university example that all of us will understand that. Uh, in this design, uh, we have an order system, product system, warehouse system, retail system, and a payment system, and finally delivery system. The order system get the user request and call the product uh, system to as a highly coupled system and after that he will push to the uh, uh, call the uh, vapor system and after one retail system payment system delivery system and user will ship the product and everything goes well in a theory called manual but to implement this architecture we have so many possibilities Let's have a basic one that I think all of you have experienced and faced that in your experiences. Malaltic example, 
the nightmare of all of us. Uh, I just want to um, have an example in multi design uh, that, that I call them state matching. It's called a state matching pattern. So requester order order product product and after the warehouse retail payments read delivery and if all of these parts all of these components all of the http calls get your success response you can get back to the requester and say yes we got that you're ready to ship you the product the advantage of this solution the requester knows that your system fails or your system can handle the, the order but um, that's a, that's the best case everything goes well if a retail system goes down what's happened if it's about five seconds request will try again uh, one two two five and you will get that but if you go down in the worst situation for three hours the retail system goes down for three hours or for any reason whatever is the reason I don't care about that but everything fails don't remember don't forget that <laughs> remember any time everything fails so you're lost so distributed architecture uh, came in play to resolve most or part of these problems so in a distributed architecture, we have dependencies. Order system has a highly coupled dependency to the product system. Also, he has the loosely coupled dependency to the retail system, payment system, delivery system, and all of that. So order system get the information of product, push to call the retail in a synchronous manner. And it's done for him, retail system, and again, everything is simple everything is simple but the connectivity we have a broken connection between order system retail system we are lost we are totally lost so here what can happen if the whole system is down all your business is down you're out of service fully out of service it's not just part of your system you're out of service what can we do in these situations? Let's have a look to event driven architecture with its proper challenges, but pros and cons. We'll discover all that today. Let's have a look at the loosely coupled dependency part. The order system and retail system are loosely coupled, uh, decoupled by the responsibilities. But order system can fail, retail system can fail. Can, uh, how can I resolve the broken uh, connectivity problem? So just with a simple message queue, the order system push that event, the order retail system will fetch that event whenever he's alive, he's healthy. The system get healthy and he will process that event. Surely we, have, we may have in the board situation, uh, some some hours per year is acceptable uh some latency in the processing but we have our clients we keep our users happy and our customers happy every everyone is happy but a delay can be acceptable the order system don't care about the emailing you want to give the responsibility to send the email to the user to the email system so email system need the same event and retail system so order system process that and push that event to message queue email system is done retail system process that event and after that for him it's okay everything goes well he will ask the message bus the queue to remove that event so the Email system comes back after five minutes and said, oh, we lost the, the, in the, uh, the event in the queue. So the tool is the couple dependencies is failed. We cannot handle that. Let's handle that. The final architecture, the final design, sorry. 
The final design uh, mix a simple queue with a published subscribe queue. So the responsibility of the published subscribe broker is the order system. The order system is the owner of published subscribe uh, um, broker. But email system and retail system, they have their own, their own temporary storage. We call that Q, a kind of simple broker, which we push an event, he will get it, get it out, and he will remove that after treatment. So here, the, Q, the both of queues are the consumers, the subscribers of the published subscribe uh, broker. Uh, really, an email system and retail system keep the subscription uh, via order system via a broker. So we have some highly coupled dependencies, product system. How can, how can we handle that? The requesters and the order system, the product system is down. We get back to the requester, we are uh, internal server, or, 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 uh, 5xx. But if it gets down again in the worst situation for some hours, uh, user will not be happy. Any product, any business, any any company needs the satisfaction of the user. We are there um, by the user. If they are not happy, we are not here. So let's have a look at the possibilities. The callback pattern. The requester sent to the order system a call uh, a request, sorry. And order system will call the product system and ask him, give me the information that I need in an asynchronous manner. In an asynchronous manner. So product system, as he gets healthy, he will uh, uh, he will send you the call back. He will send you call as he is healthy. But the disadvantage of this solution is that your event is suspended, is waited, is in a waiting state. Waited state for one hour, two hours, three hours. And in the order system, we'll have some difficulty to manage that monitoring. The whole system, we are not we're not able to say how many times is the ideal duration for an event to be there. But this solution can, can be a nice choice for some of you in some of your designs. And event transfer state, I love that. We have already in or experience kind of that. But this time, event transfer state it, it was um, I heard that by in the um, in the presentation of Martin Fowler, and I was surprised. It's it's a long time. The order system needs some dependencies. Every time, instead of calling the product system, they will look at his local local storage. But how this storage is elemented is is reached by the product information. So if we keep a final design between product system and order system, we have two system loosely decoupled and highly available, and we can handle our dependencies as well as possible. So there is some challenges, some challenges you need to you need to manage the delta. Delta, what uh, what I'm calling delta is when the product is removed or updated or all of these, the product system will push you the events and you need a system to calculate that events and keep your database update. Uh, but don't forget to have a TTL. A product will not be there for a long life. So you don't care about the persistency of this information. Every time, 
I don't want to say to remove the product information. I don't want to say to keep it. That exactly depend on the situation, the, your design, your business. But keep it, um, keep this uh, storage as small as possible. And uh, in my side, I keep it just for journey, journey uses. And I will element it again if I don't, uh, if I need that product again. And the last solution to handle this uh, highly coupled problem is not my stuff. It's a cache system. You're aware. Or the system, your local cache, you get that. And the first time you call product system and the second one, second time, you use your cache, uh, cache item. So everything is good. It's a simple solution to Im implementing that is just some hours. You can you can uh, implement that just in one hour, 30 minutes. It's as easy as possible. And but it's not it's not my preference. OK, let's have a look uh, at several. Uh, till now, we was we was solving the dependency problems. But uh, we talked about downtime. We talked about um, unavailability of systems, all of the a peak load, and all of that. How we can handle that? Okay, auto scaling. You can have multiple servers that handle that. But if in a black typical example, Black Friday, you call you heard that you read that. But I repeat it again. The Black Friday will. Uh, will push you a huge amount of information of request and what how you want to handle that how many how many how many servers you need you can handle that but is it the base the, the best solution but i don't care about my servers i don't care about containers i want to be auto scaled i just do my business I just my responsibility is not is not adding the servers or containers or calculating load balancing. That's my that's not my stuff. That's my stuff. So how can I get rid of that? The servers architecture have some characteristics again: auto scaled, secure, auto managed, business centric, and stateless. They are absolutely stateless. There are several functions, the small functions. So the problem, as I explained, the peak load, the downtime, your in or final to our design, if the email system is down and retail system is down, they can get get back healthy and come to look for the events. But uh, it's a lose of uh it's a lose of a uh, business so just what you know the timeout handle your timeout the serverless uh, the serverless uh, providers they don't let you to leave the container for full for full day they're limited but azure have a, a blink system blink but it costs uh, shared context take care about shared context the stateless functions are not uh, able to handle well shared context and concurrency you have also burst uh, burst capacity burst concurrency reverse uh, reserve concurrency and cold start handle well your cold start and your you need to monitor well your system and decide your function your container and need how many memory and cpu and must be considered a small functions in a serverless and EDA. Uh, the decoupling uh, make it difficult to the monitoring. So you need to colorate them, push the create the trace ID in the other system and look everywhere, everywhere and use the central monitoring dashboard. Retry and use that data queue as possible. Keep track of the service error. Any any uh, cloud providers can have problems. 
the, the many service can fail. The, think about that. Don't everything fail. Don't be, don't trust uh, the cloud provider and throttling. You can be throttling. The, the, uh, I know we passed the time, I think. Yeah. Yeah. I think so we can the, give you about 30 seconds more. Uh, that was the last slide. Uh, slide. Uh, just, I want to say that the cloud providers, uh, which uh, provide you the serverless function as Azure and GCP or AWS, AWS, uh, they have limit nation. So when you keep the uh, limit, you will be throttled. So take care of that. Thank you so much, Amit. That was <laughs> that was a wonderful presentation. Um, and you know, hopefully, you can continue to engage with you know our conference attendants through the chat and through the different um, yeah, I'm here. partner village. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you.